Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Continuing on the project for the number 8 Stanley. In the last video I stripped it down and I have all the wooden pieces off of it and I'm just down to the iron. Got the sole here. It's kind of rusty. It's not really really bad but it's got some rust on it. And because of all the little nooks and crannies and it has the uh, japanning still on it, I don't want to strip it and I don't want to sand it. And wire brushing it tends to take off the japanning just as fast as it takes off the rust. So I'm going to try electrolysis. Electrolysis has one problem though. This has to be immersed in water. Now I have got some four inch PVC pipe that I could drop this down into with an electrode next to it and possibly do a good job of uh, taking the rust off of it. But it certainly won't fit in this pan. This is the pan that I've done everything else in. This or a five gallon bucket. And as you can see, it sticks out. Now if you leave part of this out above the water, it puts a line on the part. I know electrolysis isn't supposed to etch anything, but there is a visible line on the part when you're done if you don't have it completely immersed. Even if you do one half, flip it over and do the other half, it leaves a line on the surface. I want to have something deep enough to put this into, which means it's going to have to be at least two and a half inches. I really want to have about an inch over the top of it, so let's call it three and a half inches deep. That's a minimum. It could be deeper than that, but I want to have at least an inch of water over the top of it. Then I have to have a steel plate underneath it to act as the electrode. So three and a half, add another quarter inch for the steel plate. I'm coming up to three and three quarters. So I've got to have something at least four inches deep. The sole of the plane is 23 and three quarter inches long. So I've got to have it longer than that. Well, I just don't have anything that size. I just don't have any trays or troughs or uh, bins or buckets, anything that size. That's a pretty good size tray to keep around. Now I could make one up out of steel, but I really don't want to spend the time and I don't need to. I can make a temporary bath that will work just fine for electrolysis by using some scrap lumber and a couple of garbage bags. So let's get started on making that because I want to get this in the bath and get it going. If I make the trough rectangular and 25 inches long, now that's inside measurement. And that's three inches wide. I'd like to put a few more pieces in there. So if I lay them out, something similar to that, I can make one bath handle more than one part. The blade itself, I have to flatten that all up. So I'm just gonna sand this. So 25. And that's going to be about seven inches across. So 25 by seven, inside to inside. Since my scrap pieces are three quarters of an inch thick, I have to add three quarters inch on the outside and then the end piece is going to be seven inches 
plus an inch and a half. So outside the outside, has to be eight and a half. And this piece on the side can actually be 25 inches long. That's all it needs to be. And I'll put the overlap on the end pieces. So I'm gonna need two pieces, eight and a half, and two pieces, 25. This is some uh, car siding left over from replacing the door on my son's garage when he lived in Kalamazoo. Waste not, want not. Now what makes me think this will work? Well, it's because I used this method before. Years ago, when I was the maintenance manager at United Technologies, my first real supervisory job, we had a we had eight anodized tanks, four actual chemical baths, and four rinse tanks. One of the rinse tanks sprung a leak. Somebody had put acid in the wrong tank, and a strong acid uh, really doesn't react too much with steel. You know, you can put straight sulfuric in a steel tank and it'll be just fine. You mix it with a little water, like a rinse tank, next thing you know, you got a uh, galvanic reaction and it eats right through the side of the tank. Well, somebody screwed up, mixed the bath wrong, and put it in the wrong tank and ate a hole right in the side of it. Too big to patch. The whole sidewall was really, really weak. I had a whole batch of material that had to be anodized. And I didn't have another tank coming for at least two months while I had one fabricated. So we went and bought nine mil plastic, this queen the kind that you put around foundations and underneath concrete to act as a vapor barrier. And we just folded it up, lined the tank, clamped two by fours in the corners to pull it back into the corners tightly so that it wouldn't interfere with the racks going up and down. We filled it up with rinse water and we ran that way for the two months while we waited for another tank to be made. But because the Visqueen was working so well, the tank was gonna cost us about $12,000 had a company that built a, a liner for the tank. It was just a bag. The bag was made out of vinyl and it exactly fit over the tank with a flange along the top. We laid the bag down inside the tank, clamped the flanges down to the top, and we ran that way for the rest of the time I was with United Technologies, which was another four years. 
It cost about $3,000 for the tank liner, which is an expensive rubber bag, right? But it's a heck of a lot less than the 12 grand we were going to have to pay for a full tank. And we didn't have to tear out the old tank. All the fittings and pipes and everything else, we just hooked up the uh, bag to the flanges, fastened them together, bolted it in with a gasket, we were done. So I know this bath is going to work and it's going to make a nice temporary piece that I can uh, do this plane in and if I ever get another eight, well, I can make another one. It's just made out of scrap lumber. Now I could probably get by without putting a bottom on this, but I think I'm going to put a bottom on it just for the sake of having it be a little bit stronger. I'm going to have to move the tank around and I don't want to have to support the weight of the water on just the bag. A few extra pieces of scrap sitting around are always handy. In this case it's the tail end of a board that I used to make the panel over the top of the desk. Now this is not my usual piece of equipment to pull out to cut something. This is an Atkins. Made expressly for the Smith Hardware Company. 929 Broadway, Oakland, California. Long ways from home. I'm going to go with a little longer screw on these. I used inch and a quarters on the first one. I'm going to go inch and five eighths, which is about three eighths of an inch longer. That's going to stiffen up the box quite a bit and tie the sides into the ends. Now this will hold about three gallons of water and I'm just guessing on it. Might be as much as four. At eight pounds a gallon, four times eight is 32. I think I'm better off having a good solid bottom on this thing. So that I don't end up having a leak. Now we have an electrolysis tank that will handle this and anything else I want to put into it. So I can put the frog in. The chip breaker. And the blade cap. I think that will work. Now I just got to line the bottom of it with plastic.
And I put the electrode in the bottom. Because I want to be able to clip. This is the red lead. I want to be able to clip that to that steel plate there and have it be a good electrical connection up above the water. If I have it below the water, this clip will corrode. That's actually why I have a, a little bit of red paint on this black handle. The original one rusted right off. It got into the bath, ate it up about 12 hours. Now I'm going to make this into a rack to sit on the inside. So I can clip this off here. have this end stick up out of the tank. That way I don't have the two electrical conductors touching. And I'll be able to make connection through the steel pieces. Secure this screen to some insulators. Just tucking things around in here to make sure I got everything situated where I want it. I don't want my two conductors touching. It'll greatly reduce the effectiveness of the operation. Okay, now I'm going to take my parts out. And mix up my bath. high-tech stuff, baking soda. All I need to do is make an electrolytic. Use the force of the water flow to stir up my baking soda. Now I don't need a saturated solution. All I need is a few free ions in the tank so that it will make it a better conductor.
good solid connections on the electrode and the anode. I can leave this set now and it's just going to percolate away and take the rust off the sole plate of this number 8 Stanley. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.